What is up guys, today I'm going to be taking you through a review of the Tachyon Ops HD Gun Cam Bundle. And to start off, I'm going to say you get everything you see here for the price of $200. The mounts are extra, but you can just get the camera bundle on its own for $140, and I have a video for that if you want to go check it out. But today we're specifically going to be talking about the gun mounts that come with this. If you want to check out any of the stuff that's below the gun mounts, I have that talked about in a separate video if you want to go check it out. But today we're simply going to be talking about the camera and its interactions with the gun mounts that come with this bundle. So without any further ado, let's get started. So we'll start off by talking about the mounts. This is a shotgun magazine rail, and below that is a shotgun barrel rail. Over on this side we have a rifle rail and a scope rail. And right here we have the Picatinny rail mount, and this is to house the camera. It acts as impact armor for the camera itself. And this is what you're going to be using to attach the camera to the gun itself through the use of one of these mounts. Now the gun cam bundle comes with all of these mounts, and it will also come with everything you saw at the beginning of the video. And depending on how many of these mounts you're actually going to be using, it might be more economically viable for you guys to just buy one or two of them. However, if you're going to be using all of them, it makes sense to go with the whole gun cam bundle. So to start talking about some of the mounts, each one will be provided with an allen key for you to adjust each one appropriately. And this Picatinny rail mount is what you're going to be attaching to all of these separate mounts. So say you want to mount it on a scope, you would mount the scope rail onto the scope itself, and then you would attach the Picatinny rail mount onto that, doing this. And then you would use the allen key to tighten it down, that way it doesn't move around. Once you've got that done, you've got two more screws you need to undo to be able to take apart the housing, and then you can place the camera on the inside, and then you'll be able to put the top shell back on, then you'll tighten the screws again and you'll be ready to go. Once you take off the top half, you'll see that there's a little plastic plate that protects the camera lens from being broken, and you just want to be sure that you don't lose this. Depending on what way you want the camera facing, say you have the scope mounted vertically, you'd set the camera in vertically as well. This black Tachyon logo will let you know that the camera is facing upwards. Just the same if you had the scope mount mounted at 90 degrees, you'd still want the camera facing upwards, so you'd slide it in this way. Regardless of how you do it though, you just put the camera in and then proceed to put the top shell back on. Now if you want to mount the camera underneath a gun, say a pistol or even underneath a rifle, you can do that as well. You just want to make sure, like I said earlier, to make sure it is facing the right way. So now we have the camera facing up inside the mount even though the mount is upside down. And then you would proceed to put the bottom half on. But what's really cool about this is they thought of pretty much everything. If you're going to mount this on a pistol, the trigger guard might block some of these features like the power button. So what they've done is added a button right here that presses this button on the camera. You can see the little square right there. And that will turn on the camera even if you're not able to access the normal power button located on the back side of the camera. And then after that you just put the two screws back in and you'd be ready to go. Now you also see that this mount actually has a rail as well. So if you had it mounted on something and you want another optic or say like a laser, you could put that on as well. So if you mounted this on a pistol and you used its only rail by putting the camera on, you'd still have another option to put something else on underneath. The one thing though about putting this camera inside of this mount is that the audio quality kind of goes down. The sounds that come through are a little metallic sounding, but it's not terrible. I can link you guys to a video in the description as well as an annotation to a video where I'm shooting my airsoft guns, and I'll be using this mount as well as the impact armor provided, and it shows me using this gun cam mount as well as the impact armor that is provided with the normal camera bundle. If you want to mount the camera on your helmet, this impact armor works just fine and it saves the audio quality as well. I'm not going to talk about the camera a whole lot itself in this video. I have a video where I did the camera review. So if you guys want to go check that out, I will also have a link in the description for you to check out that video. I think that's all I've got to cover for this video though. If you guys have any comments or questions about anything I did not cover or you would like me to talk about, all you have to do is leave them in the comment section down below or send me a private message if that works for you. And as I said earlier in the video, I'll have a link in the description to some of my test footage, as well as the link to the video of the review of the camera itself. So if you guys want to go check that out, I'd go ahead and do that. Otherwise, I guess I'll see you guys in the next video.